Those who have studied the history of Pallant Hamill know that many women were at the forefront of social life in those days. Maitreses born in the royal family were highly respected. Women born and raised in the Chola clan had their own property rights. Each had Tharavariya villages, Nansay Bunsay lands, and cattle wealth. It is important to note how they used these possessions. Many used the property to conduct various works in the temples in their name. Lighting of the Thiruvilaka, making of the Tirumala, performing Thiruamutha to the Desandras and Sivanatis. Many royal matras made Nivantams and had them engraved on Silasasanam or copper plates. While renovating the palace Pandur temple was a common practice in those days, only Sundara Chola's lovely daughter, Kundave Prati, used her possessions for another type of charity. Seeing the condition of his sick father, perhaps because he felt sorry for him, he became interested in establishing Dharma medical roads all over the country. We have already seen that an Athura Shala was established in the name of Parantaka Chakraborty in Palay Are. Similarly, Kundave Devi had arranged for the construction of an Athura Sala in the name of her father in Tanjavur. On this day of Vijayadashami, it was arranged to start the Athura Sala and to write the related charters. In Parambati, outside the Tanjore Fort, in the Garuda Mandapam opposite the Purumal Temple, the Sundara Chola Athura Sala was inaugurated. Due to Tirumal's protecting deity and Gurudashwar not bringing the elixir, Kuntavabh Prati established a temple in the Garuda Mandapam adjacent to the Vishnu Temple. Countless people of Tanjore city and neighboring villagers gathered for this event. Men, women, and children flocked in flamboyant fashion. The Chola Emperor's ministers, high and low level officials, stonemasons who engrave Silasasana, Vishvakarmas who write copper plates and palace servants were present in large numbers. The Velayka soldiers came playing instruments such as their ray, tampatai etc. The guards of the Tanjore fort came swinging swords and lances and chanting Dana, Dana. Both the Palyavatarayas came majestically on elephants. Prince Madhurandak Deva climbed on top of the white Puravi and came in distressed sitting. Princess Kundave Prati and her friends and some of the old palace matar arrived in the palanquin. From another side came an ivory pala with a palm leaf of Ilayarani Nandini of Pavur. Princess Kundave Prati and her friends and some of the old palace matar arrived in the palanquin. From another side came an ivory pala with a palm leaf of Ilayarani Nandini of Pavur. Princess Kundave Prati and her friends and some of the old palace matar arrived in the palanquin. From another side came an ivory pala with a palm leaf of Ilayarani Nandini of Pavur. Kundave Devi, Rani of Palyavur and other matars came and sat on the blue canopy that had been set up for the matars in the palace. Then, on the signal given by the great celebrant, the Vapavam began. First, two Adhuvamurthis chanted the Devara hymn Mantra Mavata Niru. People were mesmerized by listening to that song which was sung very sweetly with the accompaniment of musical instruments such as harp, mat alum etc. There was silence in the large crowd. But only where the palace pender was sitting, there was a sound of two people talking in soft voices. Nandini, the queen of Palavu, sat close to Kundave and said, Devi. In the olden days, Lord Sambandha sang this song and cured the Pandya king's illness by singing this song. Now why does this song not have that power? Even if the song has no power, the power of Thiruniru is gone? In this age, there are no medicines, herbs, doctors, hospitals, etc. Can't you? She asked. Yes, queen. In those days, Dharma prevailed in the world. That's why the magical water had so much power. Now the world is corrupted by sin. There are traitors who conspire against the king in the country. Have we heard all this before? That's why the power of magic has diminished and medicine is needed. Said the younger bratty and looked at the face of the younger queen of Pavur. There was no change in Nandini's face. Really? Are there traitors in this day plotting against the king? Who are they? She asked politely. That's what I don't know either. Some say one thing, some say another. I'll see if I can stay here for a few more days to find out what's true. If I'm in the old room, 
what do you think is going on in the world? Said Kundave. You've made a good decision. You'd better stay here if you ask me. Otherwise the kingdom will crumble. I'll help you as much as I can. We have a guest in our house. He might as well help them. She said. Who is that guest? Kundave asked. Kandan Maran, the son of the Sambuvarayar of Kadampur. Have you seen him? He is as tall as a coconut tree. He is constantly shouting lonely and traitor. You spoke of treason a moment ago? Can you say what is a greater treason than royal treason? Well said. For a woman born to be unfaithful to a husband holding hands is worse than treason. After saying this Kundave Devi stared at Nandini's face. None of the changes she expected happened. Nandini's face was covered with a charming smile as before. You are very right, but Kandan Maran will not agree. He will say that the deadliest betrayal of all is friendship betrayal. A man who he thought was his best friend has not only turned into a loner, but has stabbed him in the back and run away. Since then, Kandan Maran has been suffering like this. Who is he? The one who did such a careless thing. Someone is Vandaya the Van. He belongs to the monkey clan that used to rule in a town called Thiravalam in Thonday country. Have you heard? Kundave bit the coral seeds with her pearly teeth. It's like asking, what happened later? What happened later? His friend ran away after stabbing Kandan Maran in the back. My brother-in-law sent men to catch him. How do you know for sure he's the one? Whether he is one or not, what do I know? I am only saying what Sam Bowerier's son says. If you want, you can ask him in person and find out all the details. Yes, I have to see the son of Sam Bavariar. I heard that he survived and was reincarnated. Is he in the palace of Palyavar since then? Yes, he was wounded and brought to our palace the next morning. The responsibility of treating the wound fell on my head. He slowly survived, the wound is still not fully healed. It's surprising that you nursed him from the sidelines and still haven't fully recovered. So be it, Queen. I must come and see him. Was the Sambuvarayar clan born the day before yesterday? Isn't it a clan that has been renowned for its valor since the days of Emperor Parantuk? That's why I said it too. You will at least get up to our poor palace to see Kandan Marin, won't you? Said Nandini. By this time the Devara song was over and the Thanasasana reading had begun. First, Thirumugam of Sundara Chola Emperor was recited. In that letter, the emperor had informed that since the younger Pratiyar has come to give the entire income of Nalar Mang Alam village, which we had given as a grant to our lord Kuntavab Prati, we have made all the Nancy lands of that town as Iraeli land. Thirumandra Alai Nayakar read it and gave it to the chief constable Palyavatarayar, who took it with both hands and put it on his eyes and told him to give it to the accountant and keep it in the account. Then Kuntavab Prati's Dhana Sila Sasanam was read. It was carved in black stone that the farmers of the said village should enjoy all the rights and should send to Sundara Chola a Thurasala doctor of Tanjavur 200 kalam of paddy per year and 50 paces of green grass, 5 paces of goats and 100 fresh water daily for the patients who are treated at the Athura road. It was detailed. After reading the Silasasana, it was handed over to the village leaders of Nalar Mangala who had come there for this Vabhava. The village leaders reverently took the Sasanak stone and placed it on the nearby elephant. Then long live King Madurai Khanda Koirajaksari Sundara Chola. The sound of thousands of voices spread in all directions. Competing with the sound of the voice, the sound of a hundred bells filled the sky. Then in sequence long live the goddess Ile Apraditi Kundave. Long live the heroic warrior Aditha Kari Kalar. Long live Prince Arulmas Hivarmar. Long live the penitent son of Lord Shiva, Madhuran Thakdeva. All slogans and counter-slogans were raised. At the end, Tanathakari, the head of the grain store, the god who decrees, only the soldiers of Pavur made slogans and the general public did not join in much. At that time Kundave Prati tried to see the face of Ilayarani of Pavur but was unsuccessful. 
There is no doubt that even the iron-chested younger Braddy would have been horrified to have seen Nandini's face when she was greeted mainly about Aditha Kari Kalar. Only the soldiers of Pavur made slogans and the general public did not join in much. At that time Kundave Prati tried to see the face of Ilayarani of Pavur but was unsuccessful. There is no doubt that even the iron-chested younger Braddy would have been horrified to have seen Nandini's face when she was greeted mainly about Aditha Kari Kalar.